That's right, people. We're stepping up our game in 2024. I'm using the whiteboard for our first video of the year. Welcome to White Collar Advice. Happy New Year. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you find value. If not, I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. It's the first video of the year. I'm doing the best I can. This video, we're going to talk about what happens if you are told you have a horrific, terrible sentencing judge. There ain't nothing you can do to influence this judge. The judge is not receptive to mitigation, people. When you sit down, the judge is, when you go to your sentencing hearing and the judge sits down, the mind is already made up. Why allocute? Why do anything? Why have your friends and family come up? The judge's mind is already made up. Let's, for purposes of this video, work under that idea. So what then can we do to influence the ultimate outcome if your judge's mind is already made up, as insane as that sounds? Now, the idea for this video stemmed I was on a cruise last week, a Mexican cruise with my family. And like prison, I'm glad I experienced prison, though I know I never want to go back. Same thing with a cruise. Glad I did it once. Hope to never go back. So you'll see some of these stickers here from our first from our first cruise. Doing a little work on the cruise early in the morning, I received an email from someone in our community who was a little upset, down, because some of the mitigation work that we created sent to the lawyer. And the lawyer said, hey, this is really good stuff. I just don't think it will influence the judge. And here's the irony, because we had a call earlier today with the lawyer, with whom I really like. The lawyer said, good stuff. Not really sure it will influence Judge Wilson. And then I said, Judge Wilson sentenced me. I didn't cooperate. I didn't get a 5K1. Government asked for 24 months. I got 18 months. I believe judges can be influenced positively if defendants do the work. But for purposes of my call with my client and his lawyer in this video, let's work under the idea nothing matters. What then do we do? I asked our client. And of course, because he's been training and learning and listening, he said the right answer. Get ready, people. We're about to get use the whiteboard for the first time in 24. It's thrilling, right? I'm out of the office. Kids are back in camp today. It's interesting to have a little quiet and peace after a cruise where you're living in a room the size of your prison cubicle. Sorry, there was some trauma. More from the cruise than prison. Let's talk about who we then influence. I have been told from some people, they think, that if you have a really difficult sentencing judge, they tend to really respect government bureaucrats, people within the government, the probation officer, a prosecutor. They're going to rely on the probation officer's report more than a judge that might go rogue or really up, or up and down out of the guidelines, really a free thinking type judge. And those judges can be good and bad. They can go really high. They can go really low. They can be a much greater variance put it that way. So judges who tend to be harder, more strict, give longer sentences will really respect the opinion of the government, which means the person you are working to influence isn't your judge. It starts off with the probation officer, who will probably be at your sentencing hearing. When the sentencing hearing opens, your judge will most likely ask, have you read the probation report? Yes. Did you review it with your lawyer? Yes. Do you understand it? Yes. The judge will most likely say, I've read it from start to finish. This is a very valuable document. Some judges have said, and I've been at these sentencings, the probation report is the most influential document. And at the end of that report, most likely the probation officer is going to recommend how long you should serve in federal prison, if at all. Therefore, in our expert opinion at White Collar Advice and the thousands of people that we have guided and thousands of sentencing hearings that I've attended, together with yours truly serving some time in prison and learning from my business partner and mentor, Michael Santos, it probably makes sense that you do all you can to influence the probation officer, which is why when someone says to me, my lawyer says it's too early to mitigate, I got that earlier today, and it's like, hmm, we work with people who mitigate, who don't delay, who take action. I use the analogy as a golfer. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, they're preparing for Augusta today, not the week before the Masters. 24 hours a day preparing for sentencing. It is a full-time job. We work with people who embrace that idea rather than, hey, we're going to delay and wait and stall. The government ain't delaying. The government ain't stalling. They are working to send you to prison. Let's get back to the probation officer. So our client has an inevitable probation interview coming. And he did something or we did something that was very proactive. Some districts will allow you to complete the probation forms in advance of the interview. Some districts are no-go. So we reached out to the probation officer and the lawyer was very on board with this and said politely, would you like our assistance in completing the probation report forms? 30, 40 pages, great opportunity. Imagine if you could have written your own plea agreement. It would probably be more factual. Imagine if you wrote your own release plan rather than a case manager, it would be more factual. Imagine if you wrote your own DOJ press release, it would probably be more factual. So if you have an opportunity to fill out and complete the probation report forms, you don't need my degree from USC to realize it's probably a good idea. So the probation officer said, yes, that would be great. Thank you. Here are the forms. 
some probation officers will actually send those forms to the defendant like the day before. And it's like, wait a second, I have this interview in 12 hours. They just sent me 40 pages to fill out. I'm scribbling them in. It looks terrible. It's not professional. It's not PDF'd out. It's wrong. It's not good. That doesn't help you. So in this case, we are proactive. And guess what? We're able to fill in the forms. Background, including the narrative, lessons learned, health issues, substance abuse or alcohol, plans moving forward. We're essentially writing the probation report. Then you go to a probation interview and you know what most of them say when you do it correctly and professionally along with the financials that are organized? Thank you. You've helped me. You've made my job easier and better. May I use these forms? Please, I'd love for you to use the forms. So the first person that you're looking to influence is the probation officer because that person is going to write a report and most likely attend your sentencing hearing. I encourage you to get on that right now. Prepare for the probation interview right now. And sometimes when I film these videos, people will say, oh my goodness, I saw this video. I've already done the probation interview. It was three weeks, six months, six months ago. I've yet to be sentenced. That's okay. Still share. Am I looking in the right spot that I'm going rogue in 24, the, 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 the first time here, okay? Even if you've already had the probation interview, it's fine. That doesn't mean you still can't share your work to try to influence them and ask them to get into the probation report. It's never too late to begin making better decisions and mitigating, showing who you are, what you're memorial why you're memorializing this journey, how you're becoming better, what you're learning, that it's not just about you, but you're trying to make a better influence on society. If you're working how and why, if you're making money and saving money to pay it back to your victims at sentencing, what is that process like? It's never too late to share this work. You're always influencing your probation officer. So the moment that you're Judge says, I hereby you know, sentence you to the attorney general for X amount of time. But it also makes sense, and I'm going to put up a screen share here. I'll put up an image when I edit this to someone in our community who was told by his lawyer in Nebraska that he had a very difficult judge. Same thing. So we put down the same approach. I know I have terrible handwriting. It's just what I do. Okay. God, this is bad. I mean, this alone could lead to unsubscribers or somebody not hiring our company. Yeah, I got to do it again. Hold on. So we know if we're trying to influence the probation officer, who initially is influenced by the United States attorney. In fact, you could probably bet that before your probation interview, the probation officer will have read your plea or indictment, the press releases, and probably speak to the prosecutor who indicted you. So it would probably make sense if the probation officer is going to recommend how long you serve in prison. And the U.S. attorney is going to make a recommendation how long you should serve in prison. And if you are hearing from your lawyer or somebody else that you have a tough judge who's going to pair it with the probation officer and U.S. attorney says, it probably makes sense then that you also work to influence the United States attorney who's going to make a recommendation to the judge on how long you should be in prison. You might be wondering, well, how, how can I do that? What can I do there? Myriad opportunities have you proffered? If you proffered, were you prepared? Did you articulate a clear message of remorse and reconciliation in your plans moving forward? I mentioned someone in our community in Nebraska. While negotiating the plea agreement, he shared his narrative and release plan with the prosecutor, clear, deliberate, his plans moving forward. It influenced the plea agreement and it significantly influenced the recommendation that the prosecutor made. Initially, he was looking at 10 years. Government asked for five years. The judge rubber stamped the prosecution's request. Think about that for a moment. If you know or have been told you have a tough judge, which is really kind of utter nonsense, because even the toughest judges go lower. I know because in this instance, my judge, Judge Wilson, did with me, but fine, for this video, work into the idea the judge is going to rubber stamp and the mind is already made up at sentencing. You need to be obsessed with influencing the most important stakeholders. And most people presume the most important stakeholder is a judge. Of course, a judge is an important stakeholder, but not at this part of the journey not where you are right now. So that's how I'm going to close this first video of the year, 2024, Happy New Year with the whiteboard. I want you to begin thinking, what have I done today to influence my probation officer? What have I done today to influence the United States attorney who's going to recommend how long I should serve in prison? If you approach it from this perspective and create assets and memorialize it and share it in a way that's honest and deliberate, not make believe and made up, no blaming or excusing, however, but things of that nature, do it in a way that is deliberate and strategic, you're going to advance your chances to get a shorter sentence and influence in the end this judge because the influencing of the judge, if it's a tough judge whose mind can't be changed, as ridiculous as I think that is, you will have actually done that influencing by virtue of influencing these two most important stakeholders, the probation officer and the U.S. attorney. That's what I want you thinking about and getting excited about. 
the work should make you feel good. The process of doing the work and building and creating, besides living with dignity and your family witnessing how hard you're working to create a new record, it pays off. Get a better sentence, you get home earlier, less time in prison, less money your family is sending you back to work, more freedom. It is a win-win, but it does require work and it requires embracing the stakeholders. Thank you for watching the White Collar Advice channel. I look forward to seeing all of you much more in 2024.